Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Jack and welcome back to Loud Movies. Today we're going to be doing the review for Jungle Cruise. It's out on Disney Plus, it's out in cinemas. If you haven't seen this film, I recommend everyone here goes and watches it. This is the first film review for the 2021 stuff that I've done here where I've really, you know, enthusiastic about this film. It has Dwayne Johnson, it has Emily Blunt, Edgar Ramis, it has Jack Whitehall, it has an astounding, amazing cast. It, you know, it's amazing. It's got so much to it. So, the film is sort of an interesting one for me. Because I, it's a Disney film. It's uh, based upon the Jungle Cruise ride at Disney. And I didn't think I'd enjoy it. I wasn't one of them people who thought, eh. I saw a couple of the little clip sneak peeks and stuff. And I didn't think I'd enjoy it. But I was going to watch it because Dwayne Johnson was it. It wasn't going to be one that I'd watch straight away. But doing this YouTube channel, of course, I've been going out there watching films that I normally wouldn't potentially watch. And, of course, straight away. Wouldn't normally watch the course straight away. But the thing with this film that grabbed me was, well, it's a Disney film, Jungle Cruise. And it's got Dwayne Johnson in it. And you can't go wrong there. So I decided that I'd sit and watch it. It's about a two hour and seven minute film. That does include the credits. It's... it's it's a very big film, uh, to be honest, as well. For, for, they've managed to base a two-hour movie off a Disney ride. Sounds stupidly unreasonable. It sounds impossible to me when, when I first heard about it. But they've done it in a way that is so, so well. It's It's been an amazing... I mean, it's been an amazing journey uh, throughout the film. And the thing that I like about the, the whole concept is... It's set within the First World War, where women aren't really working, or some some women are starting to get rights. I don't remember where it was really set, but it was set in the time where women weren't really working. There was a war going on, and some women could break through and do a bit of work. And it's a piece of history as well in that sense, but the, the, it shows a piece of history in the movie. But there's a part of the film... Right at the very beginning where Jack Whitehall's character, he's this, I'd say archaeologist, professor sort of thing. He gives these uh, keynote speaks and stuff. He talks to people uh, with inside these loud big ballroom sort of type rooms and discusses various things. You know, he talks about how he, how he's found these sort of discoveries and what he's found and what he's done researching with in his exhibition sites and everything and one of the exhibitions that they go on to find is it's like the secret to life the key to life key to living for years and years and years no more death no more hurt the one thing this film does really well is it gives it an impossible type of plot and it spins it in a way that really sort of stands out to me and i really do enjoy the fact that they spun it really quickly they gave you, they weren't really slow with it. It was a more rhythm, boom, 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 boom. Uh, Dwayne Johnson's character, he comes into it and he plays a character called Frank. And the other thing is, is the film really does um, sort of, it keeps to the beats with even him. He's this man who's been living on this island for God knows how long. No one really knows to begin with. And he makes people pay him extra money essentially he does these little cruise trips that they're paying for and he then makes them so scared upon these cruise trips that these um that of course the passengers upon his boat have to pay him go oh my engine's folding mate if i go any faster than this pay us please and he gets more money that way so he, he's a bit of a con artist in that sense he creates the fear which is a good idea and then charges people to get out of it which is a, a good idea but overall comes under the con artist sort of line of work which is something that he clearly was in and is in during this film he then meets a uh emily blunt and jack whitehall who of course play lily hooten hooten and mcgregor hooten and they sort of that's where the plot starts to get better and better and the movie starts to get better, is right from the get-go, 
Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt's characters have this sort of undeniable connection. They have this chemistry that neither one of them want to admit. She's attracted to him. He's attracted to her. It's one of them sort of... But they don't say nothing because they pretend to hate each other's guts like every sort of movie does. In a way, they go, I hate you. I hate you too. And then they sort of stand closer to closer and closer. But this film, for me, was really showing a beautiful story arc between two people coming closer together. And then with them coming closer together, it also came with... <sighs> The, the, like the thing is, the, the, there is the third wheel, and that's Jack Whitehall's character, McGregor. He's the third wheel of them two sort of dynamics and stuff. But they have some moments where they're alone and that, and there's certain things there. But he's always in the background. And it makes you feel like, in, in hindsight, you'd originally think that you wouldn't care about his character. But you actually do. And the movie really does... And, I mean, it really does show this really good understanding of how you can have a third wheel character who you're not really in this sort of... I'd, I'd say it was part of it was like a love story, because every Disney film has that sort of love story. This wasn't as much as a love story, but it has that love story dynamics in he saves her, she saves him, he saves... You know, the, the back and forth sort of thing. And the third wheel. Unless you watching Snow White, which is seven wheels, because of the seven dwarfs, but, I mean, that, that was that was just too easy to get out there, <laughs> it's a Disney film, you know, uh, this is uh, something that I was very intrigued to see what would happen, I didn't think I'd care about the character that much, but I preferred to, you know, I was very much like, oh, okay, so McGregor's doing this, and it all, they made it in a way that the third wheel sort of connected into the story much more than other films do, if you watch a load of films like I do, you sort of see some third wheel adaptations not work so well, which sometimes does suck. Of course, this one they did fantastically, and there was nothing really wrong with it. Um, there was nothing really to worry about with this movie either. So, this film to me was a fantastic movie. I hadn't watched any press for it, hadn't watched any trailers, hadn't seen any posters. But upon watching this film, I'm like, right, okay, I think I've been on the Jungle Cruise ride once, I believe. I don't remember fully. I was younger when I went to Disney. And the last time I went to Disney was like 2011, 2012. But, there was, you know, I've not gone in so long. But Jungle Cruise really sort of grabbed me from the get-go. Which is very strange, because I watch old classic films um, from like the 80s and 90s, even though I wasn't born then. And they grabbed me just a little bit more. They piqued my interest a little bit more. But this film right here has done something incredible for me. It's given me this sort of un... I don't know what to call it. It's given me this feeling just to... I'm now hoping they do a sequel. I'm hoping they follow it up. Can they? Yes. No. I'll discuss it in a future video. But this film really does have some good qualities. So before I get into the spoilers, because there's so much I want to talk about... But there is very little, like, there's this, There's so much I want to talk about, but I'm just going to drift off into different sections. There will be some spoilers here, but not that many. And I'll tell you when a spoiler is coming up momentarily, basically. I'll tell you when it is coming up. But this film did something also amazing, is that you don't really know much about Frank, Dwayne Johnson's character. You don't know much about him. And there's always that looming mystery. And there's, there's this stone speared head thing. Uh, it's called the arrow's head. It's the shape of an arrow's head. And the thing with this is it seems to be a cool little artifact that um, Lily, Emily Blunt's character, stole at the beginning of the film. So, of course, the second Frank sees that, he goes, I want that. I need that. And you think he's just like a thief who thinks he can pawn it for some money. Because we know that we've already been established that he needs money within the film. We've already established that. He then fights off a cheater. Who wants some steak. He fights the cheater off. And that is really the first. I thought, oh, this is really good. He's fighting for a cheater. He is showing himself. Then it gets a little bit weird. 
he goes back to his boat and it was his cheetah he sent afterwards he sent after him um sent him to that place uh said oh come come on in like he he's friends with this cheetah and this cheetah lives with him on this boat and of course once uh McGregor and Lily find out that he he was the one that orchestrated the entire thing so he could get onto the boat uh, that, that he could be the sailor of the boat that they would they wanted to travel on because they were going to go to somebody else. Um, it actually makes for a very good plotline. He wanted on that boat. He then gets them all attacked by accident. Uh, well, on purpose to begin with, but by accident later on. And there's a villain after them as well. This is a completely different villain to the one that Frank gets them all attacked with. Prince Jokomar. He is the bad guy from the get-go. We know this. This film does something also quite interesting. Is Frank Dwayne Johnson. He's the bad guy. You think he's the bad guy for parts of the film. Because he's a con man. So... He then tries to cut him out of the arrowhead. You believe that's what he's going to do. And then you believe he's doing something else. And you believe he's doing something else. And then you believe he's doing something else. But in the end, it comes into this beautiful, beautiful masterpiece of a work. And it's actually one of them, I think one of my most favourite films I've watched this year. Um, this released at least this year. And we're in July and I've seen Fast 9. I've seen... Um, uh, Blood Red Sky, I think it was called. I've seen um, Out of Death. I've seen mm, uh, Suicide... Uh, not, not, not the Suicide Squad. I've not seen that one. That is something that I want to watch very soon. I believe it's releasing on HBO Max, which I'm hoping it does. Um, but then there's also that... Uh, what's the other thing? What's the other film? Um, I watched Birds of Prey. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, Birds of Prey. I've watched Batman Long Halloween. I've been, more, I've been watching a lot more animated films because a lot more animated films have been releasing. But this film is beautiful. It's a beautiful piece of work. Beautiful artwork. So, would I recommend it to people? 100%. I'm literally going to tell everyone I know to watch this film. It's a beautiful film. It's beautifully crafted. It's beautiful cameras. Beautiful settings. Beautiful story. And I just, I think this is my, probably my favourite film for a very long time that I've seen um, on Disney Plus, of course. I've not yet watched Soul, or um, I've not watched some of the Pixar films that are coming out in recent years, because I'm not too fond of Pixar films now, because I'm older. I'm part of that old, you know, I'm 18, 19 now, so I'm watching movies that it's more that age setting. Um, and I, I watch Pixar films, don't get me wrong, I still watch Pixar films to this day, but it's like the cla like to me what my classics of Pixar was. Like the Toy Story series, the Incredible series, the Cars series. I still, I still watch Pixar films. I'm watching Monsters at Work at the moment because I grew up with Monsters Inc. But I'm not watching the newer stuff. But I definitely want to check out Onward though, which is a film that released like last year that I didn't check out at the time. So I want to check out Onward because it has Tom Holland and Chris Pratt in. So I'm going to probably do a review of that at some point, a little, little discussion about that. That film, but that's that'll be whenever I watch it. Got a lot of videos planned for the next couple of days. Of course, it is the last day of April, which means the four videos a day thing starts tomorrow. I've been preparing like hell. I mean, there was supposed to be a video that released today that I've pushed back till tomorrow because I wanted to release this tomorrow instead of wait till the first. It's it's going to be a massive whirlwind during the summer. 31 days, 124 videos, all releasing with the span of two hours of each other. Only 10, 15 minute videos, not that big. Of course, you do get the bigger collections after a viewer series of movies or, or like a series of shows. But at the moment, I'm not reviewing any series of shows. I'm uh, going to be doing the episodes for Brooklyn Nine-Nine at some point. That's going to run, though, until like October, November, maybe even December time, depending on how many episodes are in that. So I have, I have a lot of plans, and of course then when the Blacklist comes out in October, I'll take that spot, that, that sort of review place. So I'm essentially trying to put TV in here as well, but you're still going to get movie, you're going to get two movie videos a day basically. But I'm going to expand TV into this channel as well. I was going to expand gaming, I was going to create a new channel for gaming, 
but then I couldn't because I was like, well, there's not that much like gaming news that I'd cover. I was going to expand into this, but no, I'm just thinking TV and movies because they're very easy for me to do. I haven't really got to play anything. <laughs> I've just got to watch a film, which is very nice and relaxing for me. You guys seem to be enjoying it. If there's any movies you guys want me to watch, whether it be old, new, or upcoming films that aren't released yet, let me know because I will watch them and I'll review them and I'll talk about them. Because what I'm trying to do is build a community here. At this moment in time, you're going to hear me say, I have 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10 subscribers in future videos. That's because they were pre-recorded before this one. But at the moment, before this video releases, I have 11 subscribers, which I'm very thankful about. I'm very thankful. And I, I don't know how I've managed to grow to 11 subscribers. I've been on YouTube for seven days by this point. I've been on YouTube for a week. Uh, I've been putting two videos out a day. That's not going to change for a long, long while, I don't think. It might change in the near future. Um, or the distant future, if you like. But I don't think it will change anytime soon. I'm hoping. But with that being said, Jungle Cruise is a film for everybody to go watch. I don't generally do this on the channel. I don't give ratings because... I just prefer to give a little bit of a, of a stale review and then like a, a, a review. Sometimes it's stale, sometimes it's ex excellent, exciting, fun like this one. But this film to me, if I did them sort of numbers and whatnot, I'd have 10 out of 10 for this. This film brought me everything I probably wanted in the time I'm in at the moment. Is It brought me a love story, it brought me an adventure story, it brought me an action story. It brought me a third world. It brought so much to the table. And of course, it brought Jane, uh, Dwayne jo The Rock Johnson in it, Jack Whitehall, Emily Blunt together. And I think the film just, is just a beautiful film. If you guys want to talk about this in the comment section below, please do. If you guys want me to do a follow up video talking about what I thought about the ending, I'll happily do that. If you guys want me to talk about that, I will happily talk about that. But for that video to be made or even created i'll need to see at least two comments down below telling me you'd like to see that video be created because i'm not going to create something if not many people want it but if two of you want it i'll create it just for the two views just for you two guys i'm very much like that i'll create a video two people because at the moment i can i'm free i need four video ideas for the next uh 31 days well actually 30 days now so i'm very much Boom, 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 boom. Excited for this. I I cannot believe that I'm about to say this, but this is going to be one hell of a summer. I cannot wait. And I'll see you all within the next video. Goodbye. Four.